Shalom mga kapatid. Magandang araw po, magandang umaga, magandang tanghali. Good afternoon po sa anong panig kayo ng mundo ngayon na nakikinig at sa mga mga kapakinig nito. And today is Friday. Araw po ng ating half-tara portion ng ating Torah portion for the week which is Shilak. Shilak Leka, tinatawag din nilang Shilak Leka. Uh, before that, as Fletcher mentioned, kumanta muna tayo. Balikan po natin yung ating mga kinakanta, yung ating alip bait, and let's sing Psalms 119 from uh, from verse 1 hanggang verse 16. So kantayin natin yung first two letters ng Hebrew alphabet. Okay? Alip bait. Then after this, we're gonna go to Yahuwah in prayer. All right. Shalom, shalom. Blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in Yahuwah. Blessed are they that keep his testimonies and that seek him with a whole heart. They also do no iniquity, they walk in His ways. Thou hast commanded us to keep thy precepts diligently. Oh, that my ways were directed to keep thy statutes. Then shall I not be ashamed when I have respect unto all thy commandments. I will praise thee with uprightness of heart when I shall Amen. I will keep thy statutes. Oh, forsake me not utterly. Oh, that my ways were directed to keep thy statutes. Then shall I not be ashamed when I have respect unto all thy commandments. Babe, wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking hither to, according to thy word, with my whole heart have I sought thee. Let me not wander from thy commandment. Thy word have I hid in mine heart. That I might not sin against thee. Blessed art thou, Yahuwah. Teach me thy statue. With my lips have I declared. All the judgment of thy mouth, I have rejoiced in the way of thy testimonies as much as in all riches. I will meditate in thy precepts. And have respect unto thy ways. I will deny myself in thy statutes. I will not forget thy word. 16. I will deny myself in thy statutes. I will not forget thy word. Amen, amen. I will not forget thy word. Last one. I will not forget thy word. Amen and 
Amen. Hallelujah. And tuloy po tayo sa panalangin and let's ask Yahuwah for your guidance sa ating pag-aaral ngayong umaga. And hingin ko po si Brother Danny. Magandang umaga po mga kapatid. Sa mga nagkadaang araw, miss na miss po namin kayo. <laughs> Brother Benji, <laughs> nandun siya ngayon. Let's pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, creator of heaven and earth, our Redeemer, kings of kings, Elohim of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, blessed are you, our Father, Abba, Yahuwah. Maraming salamat po sa nagdaang araw, sa binigay mo sa aming kalakasan, at binigyan mo po kami pa ulit ng... Uh, Pagkakataon, binigyan mo po ako ulit kami ng hininga na tumayo ulit at magising sa aming pagkakatulog. At binigyan mo po kami, Aba, ng kaligtasan. Haya mo po, Aba, na ang Holy Spirit ay gumalaw sa aming mga buhay. Maraming salamat, Aba, sa assembly na kahit na sa Zoom at sa, sa Facebook lang kami ay kami ay nagagather at magkakaroon kami uh, bigyan mo kami ng kaunawaan sa iyong mga binibigay mong mga salita. At may pamoy namin ngayon yung katwiran, yung mga ang yung mga uta utos at sa yung mga statutes, bigyan mo po bigyan mo po ang ang uh, maghayag ngayong araw na ito ng wisdom and knowledge kay Brother Evan, kay Brother MB, kay Brother Gary at sa mga sa mga kapatid na, na makikinig ngayong araw na to upang may paliwanag katulad ni Moshe, katulad ni Yahushua Mashiach sa mga makikinig aba. Pinapanalangin ko pinapanalangin ko po na mas lalong mabuksan ang aming mga mata at pandinig ang aming mga puso at aming isip upang may pamuhay aba open our eyes upang makita yung wondrous things sa iyong tora at sa mga sa mga binibigay mo sa amin mga utos na hindi pa rin namin maunawaan aba patawarin mo po kami at bigyan mo po kami ng awa at sa aming mga nalalabag pa, aba, sa yung mga statutes, aba, by ignorance, aba, ipaunawa mo po sa amin. Patawarin mo po kami, aba, bigyan mo po kami ulit ng, uh, uh, ng kalusugan at iligtas mo po kami sa mga masama. At maging isang liwanag ang aming buhay sa dilim. At lahat po ng mga bihay at pagpapala, Aba, binabalik po namin sa iyo. Most High Holy One of Yahuwah, Most Holy One of Yashrael, Our Abba, Yahuwah, at sa aming Misaya, nag-anak ng, nag nag danak ng dugo, ang kami ay magkaroon ng kaligtasan. Yahushua, Mashiach, I pray. Amen. Amen. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, sir. And as he mentioned in his prayer, na let's Abba, Yahuwah, open our eyes on this wondrous things out of his Torah. And kantahin po natin yung part na yan. Gmail and Dali. All right, from verse 17 hanggang verse, verse 32 ng Psalms 119. From 17 to 32. All right. Diyan na po kayo. And let's sing this. Till bountifully we they serve and that I may live and keep thy word. Till bountifully we they serve and that I may live and keep thy word. Open thou mine eyes that I may behold. 
wondrous things. Out of the Torah, I mean, open thou my eyes, that I may behold wondrous things. Out of the Torah. Deal bountifully with a servant that I may live and keep thy word. Deal bountifully with a servant that I may live and keep thy word. I am a stranger in the earth. I not thy commandments for me. I am a stranger in the earth. Hide not thy commandments from me. Deal bountifully with thy servant that I may live and keep thy word. Deal bountifully with thy servant. That I may live and keep thy word. My soul break it forth, the longing that it has, and to thy judgment. At all times, my soul break it forth, the longing that it has, and to thy judgment. At all times, feel bountifully with a servant that I may live and keep thy word. What do I? Thou hast rebuked the proud that are cursed, which do learn from thy commandments, remove from me reproach and contempt. Thou hast rebuked the proud that are cursed, which lure from thy commandments, remove from me reproach and contempt. For I have kept thy testimonies, thy testimonies. Also are my delight and my counselors, for I have kept thy testimonies. Thy testimonies also are my delight and my counselors. Twenty-three, princess also, did sit and speak. Did sit and speak against me, but a servant did, did meditate, did meditate in thy statutes. Dale. My soul cleave it unto the dust. We can down me according to thy word. My soul melted for heaviness. Strengthen down me according unto thy word. I have declared my ways and thou heardest me. Teach me. Thy statutes make me to understand the way of thy precepts. So shall I talk of thy wondrous words. 29. Remove from me the way of life and grant me the Torah graciously. I have chosen the way of truth. Thy judgments have laid before me. I mean, I have sung unto the testimonies. Oh, Yahuwah, put me not a shame. I will run the way of thy commandments. 
when thou shalt enlarge my heart. 32. I will run the way of thy commandments when thou shalt enlarge my heart. Amen and amen. All right, magandang panghali, umaga, hapon po sa inyong lahat. And uh, once again, we'll be studying our Torah portion. I'm sorry, our Haftarah today. Eh, yung isip ko nandun na sa Torah portion. <laughs> At uh, bago po ang lahat, I will do some announcements. First of all, for tomorrow, we will be starting at 9 o'clock in the morning. So, mas maaga po tayo ng 1 hour so that in Saudi, that will be 8 o'clock. And then in the Philippines, that will be 1 o'clock. All right. So, that's our scripture study for tomorrow. And by 12.30, hindi po ako nagkakamali, 12.30 UAE time and 4.30 Philippine time. I we will be opta. He was invited to speak at the Sabbath uh, believers uh, congregation conference. So it's their second Sabbath conference, and we were uh, invited to speak for an hour. So ipanalangin niyo po ang inyong mga lingkod sa aming uh, sa ating itatakel na mga bagay. And sinasabi nila na sobrang advanced daw natin. Wow. Uh, pero ako po ay patuloy na na-amaze lang sa salita ng Panginoon. Dahil kung advanced na tayo, gano'n pa kalayo yung super advanced. Gano'n pa kalayo yung wondrous things out of thy Torah. And I praise and thank Yahuwah for the past year that we've been studying uh, Torah. Grabe po, grabe po ang mga kayamanan at uh, knowledge that there are things that uh, sometimes I kind of withhold na ituro kasi alam ko probably there are people who still won't believe and accept. Pero I encourage each and everyone to read Torah because ma ma maiintindihan po natin. Hindi po siya malalim actually. Nagiging malalim po siya because of the mindsets that we have and uh, the doctrines that we already know. Kaya siya nagiging malalim, nagiging offensive. Pero kung titignan natin plainly, and if we just remove all or unlearn the things that we've been taught, mas madali pong unawain ang mga bagay-bagay. Alright? And uh, it's Torah. It's Torah-based. Everything we teach is based in the first, I'd say, four books, five books of Scripture. Kasi hindi pa naman natin na tatakil in Deuteronomy, but we go through it. A few times tomorrow, we'll be reading some verses from Deuteronomy. Pero yun nga po, uh, I encourage each and everyone. Th th these are the foundational doctrines. These are foundational truths. They're very basic. Ten commandments are basic. Uh, the creation story, once we get to understand the basics, mas, mas marami po tayong mauunawaan from uh, the uh, creation story. So, Tomorrow, huwag niyo pong kakalimutan, baka dumating kayo ng alas 10, yung mga taga UAE, mag-online kayo ng alas 10 na sa kalagit na ano po yun. Alright, so we'll start at 9 o'clock. And uh, don't forget, March 24 is the first of Abib. The last new month will be on February 21. Alright, that's the last new month. That's actually the month of uh, the 12th month. Doon po magsisimula yung 12th month ng ating, ng ating Zadok Priestly Calendar. So huwag niyo pong kakalimutan kasi sabi doon po sa numbers, uh, was it 14 or 13? About the silver trumpets. If you, if you remember, I think 12. Basta, we studied that about the silver trumpets. You blow the trumpet in the beginning of the month. All right? In the, the beginning of Kodesh. So wala pa po tayong shofar, wala po tayong trumpets, but I believe we can hold scripture studies in the beginning of months. So uh, I'm actually planning na meron tayong special scripture study on the beginning of months. And please mark February 21, that's a Sunday. And then March 24, that's a Wednesday. All right, so yan po yung mga announcements natin for the following days. And hindi ko na po papatagalin. Uh, ibigay ko na po ang floor kay Brother Evan.
Gandang, gandang araw po, mga kapatid. Maraming salamat sa pagkakataon na makapagsya muli ng salita ng Panginoon. Let's go to Joshua chapter 2 po. Ito po ang ating haftara sa ating Torah portion na Shilak. Joshua chapter 2 or chapter po. Diyan na po kayo, mga batid. Masahin ko po. <clears throat> Verse 1, And Yahusha, the son of Nun, sent out of Shittim two men to spy secretly, saying, Go view at the land, even at Jericho. And they went and came into a harlot's house named Rahab and lodged there. And it was told the king of Jericho, saying, Behold, of the children of Yashrael, Yashrael to search out at the country. And the king of Jericho sent unto Rakam, Rahab, saying, Bring forth the men that are come to you, which are entered into your house, for they have come to search out at all the country. And the woman took at the, the two men and hid them and said thus, There came men unto me, but I knew whence they were. And it came to pass about the time of shutting of the gate, when it was dark, that the men went out, whither the men went I know not. Pursue after them quickly, for you shall overtake them. But she had brought them up to the roof of the house and hid them with the stocks, stocks of flocks, which he had laid in order upon the roof. And the men pursued after them the way to the Yardan and to the fords. And as soon as they which pursued after them were gone out, they shut the gate. And before they were laid down, she came up unto them upon the roof. And she said unto them, unto the men, I know that Yahuwah has given you at the land and that your terror is falling upon us and that all the inhabitants of the land faint because of you. For all, for we have heard it how Yahuwah dried up at the water of the Red Sea for you when you came out of Mitzrayim and what ye did unto the two kings of the Emrim that were on the other side of the Yardan, Sihon and Og, whom ye utterly destroyed. And as soon as we had heard these things, our hearts did melt. Neither did there remain any more courage in any man because of you. For Yahuwah Elohim, he is Elohim in heaven above and in earth beneath. Now, therefore, I pray you, swear unto me by Yahuwah, since I have showed you kindness, that you will also show kindness unto my father's house and give me a true sign. And that ye will save alive at my father and at my mother and at my brethren and at my sister and at all that they have and deliver at our lives from death. And the men answered her, our life for yours. If you utter not this at our business, and it shall be when Yahuwah has given us at the land, that we will deal kindly and truly with you. Then she let them down by a cord through the window for her house was upon the town wall, and she dwelt upon the wall. And she said unto them, Get you to the mountain, lest the pursuers meet you, and hide yourself there three days until the pursuers be returned, and afterward may you go your way. Verse 17, And the men said unto her, We will be blameless of this, your oath which you have made as well. Behold, when we come into the land, you shall bind at this line of scarlet thread in the window, which you did let us down, and you shall bring at your father and at your mother and at your brethren and at your father's household home unto you. And it shall be that whosoever shall go out of the doors of, the, of your house into the street, his blood shall be upon his head and we will be guiltless. And whosoever shall be with you in the house, his blood shall be on our head, if any hand be upon him. Verse 20, and if, a, and if you utter this at our business, 
then we will be free of your oath, which you have made us to swear. And she said, according to your words, so be it. And she, and, she, and she sent them away, and they departed, and she bound at the scarlet line in the window. And they went and came unto the mountain and abode there three days until the pursuers were returned. And the pursuers sought them throughout all the way, but found them not. So the two men returned and descended from the mountain and passed over and came to Eliahusha, the son of Nun, and told him at all things that befell them. Last verse, and they said unto him, unto Eliahusha, truly Yahuwah has delivered into our hands at all the land, for all, for even all the inhabitants of the country faint because, because of us. Praise Yahuwah. When the reading of his holy word, tayo muna ay manalangin mga kapatid. Heavenly Father, Yahuwah, El Shaddai, our Elohim, created the heaven and the earth, the Aleph and the Tau. Blessed are you, Father Yahuwah, Elohim of Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yashael, our Abba, our Redeemer, our Savior, the Mighty One and the Holy One of Yashael. Father Yahuwah, marami pong salamat sa panibagong pagkakataon na kami ay binigyan mo ng pagkakataon na makapag-aral ng iyong banal na salita. Ako po muli, Abba, ay, uh, kami ay humihingi ng tulong, humihingi ng wisdom and understanding and protection at the same time na maintindihan po na wala namin ang aming pag-aaralan niya yung gabi. Tulungan niyo po kami, Panginoon, na may share po namin ang maayos sa iyong salita na itinuro niyo po sa amin nung pinag-aaralan po namin personally. Patawad po, Panginoon, kung meron mong kaming nasasabi na, na hindi according, turuan niyo po kami na ang, ang aming sasabihin ay naayon lamang sa iyong wisdom and understanding, hindi po sa sariling kakayahan namin dahil inaamin po namin na kung wala po kayo ay hindi po namin kayang gawin ito. Once again, Abba, Patawad po sa aming mga pagkakasal at pagkukulang. Patuloy niyo po na kami tulungan maging matagumpay ang pag-aaral ng, ng iyong salita sa araw po na ito. Ito po ay aking uh, samod na langin sa iyong nakilang pangalan, Father Yahuwah. Sa aming nakilang tagapagligtas, Yahusha Hamashi. Amen. And amen. Okay. Magandang umaga po ulit. Magandang hapon po sa ating lahat. Tulad niya po ng sinabi ko kanina, ang ating pong pag-aaralan ngayon ay ang ating haftara na, na sila. Okay po, I hope okay po yung boses ko. Hindi po nagluloko. Okay po, salamat po. At uh, ang haftara po natin, ito po ay tungkol sa pinadala po ni, ni Joshua. Pinadala po ni Joshua yung dalawang spies. Very interesting kasi nung panahon ni Moshe, Uh, labing dalawa po yung pinadala niya. Which is nakikita ko, yun yung picture nung, sa, panong, sa Panginoong Yahusha din na pinili niya yung 12 apostol. Yun yung sa panahon ni Moshe, yun yung parallel doon. At mamaya makikita natin yung parallel doong dalawang pinadala po ni, ni Joshua. At uh, at the same time, ay, uh, ang topic din po na ito ay meron tayong makikilalang isang karakter dito na si Rehab. Isa po siyang uh, Gentile woman at ang kanyang pangalan, ang ibig sabihin po ng kanyang pangalan ay wife. wife. At at uh, the same time, nung siya ay naging part ng Israel, siya din po yung naging lola, lolo, uh, lola, lola ni, ni King David. Makikita po natin yan sa book of, uh, sa book of Matthew. Punta po tayo sa buong Matthew para makita lang po natin. Matthew chapter 1. Okay. Matthew chapter 1 verse 5. Sabi po dyan. Sa akin sabi dito. And Salma begat, begat at Boaz of Rahab. Rahab. So si, 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 si Rahab na pangasawa niya po si Salmon. Pinanganak niya si Boaz. 
At napakaganda din kasi yung napangasawa ni Boaz, si Ruth, na isa din po siyang pagan, uh, isang Gentile woman from Moabites. So meron na siyang background pagdating sa pakikipag-asawa sa, ano, sa ibang, kasi yung tatay niya, napangasawa niya si, si Rahab na isang Jerichoan, o hindi ko alam tawag dyan, taga Jericho po. Sabi dyan, an Ovid begat at Yeshai, an Yeshai begat king, an David the, the king begat at Shaloma of her that had been the woman of Uriah. Okay? So, bago po tayo pumunta sa ating uh, main topic, which is sa Joshua chapter 2, punta muna tayo sa Joshua chapter 1. As our introduction, maaari uh, marami sa atin na nakapakinig na po ng preaching na ito. Ito ang about sa Joshua chapter 1. Pero aralin na po natin. Let's go to verse 1. And after the death of Moshe, the servant of Yahuwah, it came to pass that Yahuwah spoke unto El Yahusha, the son of Nun, Moshe's minister. Napakaganda din po na, na, na natutunan ko. Si, si Joshua po, according sa scripture, anak po siya ni, ni Nun. At uh, kung titignan po natin yung Hebrew alphabet, ang ibig pong sabihin ng Nun ay uh, ang pictograph niya ay seed. So it means it's life. So kung babasahin natin, si Si Joshua, he is the son of life. At very interesting, kung ipaparalel po natin sa Panginoong Yahusha, Yahusha is the only begotten son of Elohim, which is the source of life. So yan po yung unang paralel po nila na makikita natin. Okay, so let's proceed. Verse 2. Nagsasalita po dito ang Panginoong Yahuwah. Moshe, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise, go over at this yardan. So makikita natin dito yung authority binibigay na kay Joshua. Okay, patay na, uh, wala na si Moshe. Ikaw na po, Joshua, ang mag sa aking chosen people. Tawid kayo sa Jordan. Proceed kayo sa promised land na pinangako ko sa kay Abraham. Sabi dyan, go over at this Yardan, you and all these people, unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Yahshua. Makikita po natin yan sa uh, Torah portion natin, sa Numbers chapter 14. Pero hindi ko na po mabasahin yan. Sabi dyan, every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moshe. From the wilderness of this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Perat, all the land of Kitayim, and unto the great sea, toward the goings down of the sun, shall be your coast. Verse 5. There shall not man be able to stand before you all the days of your life. Ito yung pangako niya, puprotektahan ko kayo. O yung security na binibigyan ng Panginoong Yahuwah as assurance kay Joshua. So same din po sa atin yan. Okay, kung patututo lang po talaga tayong magpasakop at sumunod yung protection na binigay niya kay La Joshua, same din po sa atin yan. Ibibigay din po sa atin ang Panginoon yan. Sabi dyan, as I was with Moshe, so I will be with you. So kung sinamahan ng Panginoon yung kanyang mga chosen people noong unang panahon pa, so tayo may mga natitira pa na patuloy na sumusunod sa kanyang salita, panghawakan natin yung pangako na yan, na kung sinamahan nila sila, yung sinamahan ng Panginoong Yahuwa, sila Moshe, sila Joshua, same din po na, na guidance ang ibibigay sa atin ng Panginoon. So I will be with you. I will not fail you nor forsake you. Napakaganda. Verse 6, ito yung command. Yung promise, hindi ko kayo papabayaan, hindi ko kayo iiwan, hindi ko kayo tatalikuran. Pero ito yung command ko sa'yo, be strong and be of good and of good courage. For unto it this people shall, shall you divide for an inheritance at the land which I swore unto their fathers to give them. So makikita natin dito kung ano yung pinangako ng Panginoon kay Abraham 
pinupadyak. Pero ang nakakalungkot, nung pumasok sila sa promised land, kinalimutan nila yung covenant ng Panginoon. Pero ang Panginoon, hindi niya po kinalimutan yung covenant niya kay Abraham, pinupadyak. Actually, kung babasahin po natin ang Book of Deuteronomy, may, maki- may makikita po tayo doon na nag-uusap sila ni Mose. Sabi ng Panginoon, alam ko darating ang panahon, natatalikuran din ako nito eh. Alam niya, pero binigyan niya pa rin ng chance na makapasok sa promised land. Kasi umaasa din siya ang Panginoon na baka magbago kasi nga ibibigyan niya naman yung kanyang salita as guide para hindi tayo lumayo. Pero sad to say, nakik out sila sa promised land. Hindi nila tinupad ang covenant ng Panginoon. Sana tayo. Wala ko. Verse 7. Only be strong and very courageous. Ito, iniiwasan ko ito dati, yung word. Uh, pinapalitan ko lang lagi ito ng, ng word, yung law. Sabi dito, only be strong and very courageous that you may guard to do to all the Torah, which Moshe, my servant, commanded you. Turn not from it to the left, to the right hand or to the left that you may prosper whithersoever you go. So in other words, sabi ng Panginoon, huwag yung kakalimutan itong Torah, pagkatapos pa lang ng first five books, sa book pa lang ni Joshua, first chapter, pinapaalalahanan niya, huwag kalimutan yung Torah. Sa book of Malakay, yung last chapter ng Malakay, pinapaalalahanan ulit, huwag yung kakalimutan yung Torah na binigay ko kay Moshe. Pero, pagdating sa New Testament, Wala na daw po. Pero hindi po totoo. Okay? Verse 8. This book, the shepherd of the Torah, shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate therein day and night. Ano sabi sa Psalm? Chapter 1. Blessed is the man who walketh not in the council of the ungodly. So kailangan po natin i-meditate. But you shall meditate therein day and night. Anong purpose? That you may guard to do according to all that is written therein. For then you shall make it your way prosperous and then you shall have good success. So yung purpose ng Torah na pag sinunod natin, good success. So kung gusto natin mag-prosper, hindi lang ito uh, physically, especially yung spiritual life natin na mag-grow, wag tayo lumayo sa salita ng Panginoon. Patayin lumayo sa Torah. Yung sinabi ni King David na Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Wala pa po ang New Testament noon. So ang pinapatungkol niya po doon probably yung Torah o yung Tanak. So let's go to Isaiah. May isisingit lang po ako. Ito po kasi nabasa ko kanina. Let's go to Isaiah. Kasi ang sabi ng Panginoon kay Joshua wag niyong kalimutan yung Torah. Pero let's go to Isaiah chapter 24. Ito po yung judgment na mayayari. Sabi niya sa Isaiah chapter 24, Behold, yeah, verse 1, Behold, Yahweh makes the earth empty and makes it waste and turns it upside down and scatter abroad the inhabitants thereof. And it shall be as with the people, so the priest, as with the servant, so with the so with his Adoni, as with the maid, so with her mistress, as with the buyer, so with the seller, as with the lender, so with the borrower, as with the taker of usury, so with the giver of usury to him. Verse 3, the land shall be utterly emptied and utterly spoiled, for Yahuwah has spoken at this word. The earth mourns and fades away. The world, the world languishes and fades away. The whole people of the earth do languish. Verse 5. The earth is defiled. The earth also is defiled under the habitation thereof. Why? Because they have transgressed the Torah. Ano pang ginawa nila? Change the ordinance. Ginawa po natin ito. But praise Yahuwah. Nakabalik tayo sa kanyang Torah. Okay? Broken the everlasting covenant. Therefore, has the curse devoured the earth? And they shall dwell therein, and they that dwell therein are desolate. Therefore, the inhabitants of the earth are burned, and few men left. 
Bakit na-destroy? Bakit po na-destroy? Kasi nga, we transgress na Torah. Pero ang utos niya kay, kay Joshua, first chapter pa lang ng book of Joshua, meditate nyo sundin nyo para magkaroon kayo ng good success. In other words, spiritual life natin mag-grow. Verse 9, Have not I commanded you, be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid, neither be dismayed, for Yahuwah Elohaika is with you, whithersoever you go. I hope and pray na may natutunan tayo dito sa chapter 1. So let's go to chapter 2, yung ating main topic. Verse 1. And Yahusha, the son of Nun, sent out of Shittim two men to spy secretly, saying, Go, view at the land, even at Jericho. And they went and came into a harlot's house named Rahab and lodged there. So mayroong isang karakter dito, bukod sa dalawang spies na pinalala ni Joshua, makikilala natin si Rahab. At maya-maya, papasyala natin yung buhay niya. Sabi po dyan, and it was told the king of Jericho, saying, Behold, there came men in hither tonight. So nabalitaan nila yung mga tao. Sinabi nila kay king na mayroon daw nag-spy. There came men in hither tonight of the children of Yashael to search out at the country. And the king of Jericho, Jericho sent unto Rahab, Rahab, saying, Bring forth the men that are come to you, which are entered into your house, for they have come forth to search out, to search out at all the country. And the woman, si Rahab, took at the two men and hid them and said thus. So ito si Rahab, tinago niya po yung dalawang spies na pinadala ni, ni, ni Joshua. Therefore, there came men unto me. So siya nagsasalita dito. But I knew not whence they were. So it's like, paano ko ba sasabihin? Parang may konting pagsisinungaling. Pero, nasave pa rin siya. Kasi nga, may faith. At saka pinipreserve niya kasi yung buhay ng dalawang tao. Tinutulungan niya. Which is, nasa Torah, nasa Torah din naman po yun. Na, i-entertain yung stranger. Huwag yung, aalipustahin, mahalin nyo as yourself. So si, si Rahab, as pagan woman, meron siyang alam na ganitong klaseng teaching ng Panginoon. Kaya, in honor. Okay? So sabi dyan, but I knew not whence they were. Bago tayo mag-proceed, let's go to New Testament. Let's go to Book of Hebrews. Patahan mo na natin. Anong sinasabi? ng writer about kay Rahab uh, Hebrews chapter 11 verse 30 to 31 sabi po dyan by faith the walls of Jericho fell down after they were compassed about 7 days because of faith remember the children of Israel they are, they are all saved pero hindi po sila lahat nakapasok sa promised land because of lack of faith. Wala po silang pananampalataya. So kung walang pananampalataya, probably hindi talaga susunod sa commandments ng Panginoon. Pero kung totoo po yung pananampalataya, matututo po tayong sumunod sa kanyang commandments. Verse 31, By faith, the harlot Rahab perished not because of her faith with them that believe not when she had received the spies with peace. Let's go to James. I-coconnect natin yung sinabi ni uh, Apostle James. Sabi po sa book of James. Chapter 2, verse 25 to 26. Okay, sabi sa, sabi sa Hebrews, it is by faith. Pero pagdating dito sa book of James, likewise also, was not Rahab the harlot justified by works? For she had received, for she had received, the messengers, and had sent them out another way. So yung ginawa ni, ni Rahab dito sa Old Testament ay uh, isinama sa mga writings 
ng mga apostol ni Apostle James at saka ng writer ng Hebrew, maaari si Apostle Paul. Yung kanyang ginawa, by faith, she was saved. At uh, because of her faith na totoo, ay uh, natuto siyang sumunod. Okay? Nireceive niya yung dalawang stranger, yung messenger. At sabi po siya sa verse 26, For as the body without the ruach is dead, so faith without works is dead also. So napakalinaw po ng scripture. Dati iniiwasan ko lang po ito. Binabasa lang pero hindi talaga dinidiinan. Pero ngayon pag binabasa ko po yung book of James, mas nai-enjoy ko na siya ngayon. Kasi totoo naman talaga. Kung wala ang kung yung works natin hindi according sa kanyang salita, yung ginagawa natin hindi according sa commandments ng Panginoon. Ano din po sabi ni Apostle John? Sinasabi mo, sinasabi po natin, nakilala natin ang Panginoon. Pero hindi naman natin sinusunod ang kanyang commandments. We are liars. Sinungaling po tayo. Pero sabi ni Apostle James, kung mayroong kampana ng palataya, maganda. Kahit nga yung devils naniniwala at tatakot. Pero kung wala tayong works according sa kanyang commandments, hindi din according na works sa doktrina ng tao, kundi according sa commandments ng Panginoon, ay dapat magkasama po sila. Okay? Faith. But we believe we are still, we, we still believe na we are saved by grace through faith. Pero yung faith natin, yun niya, dapat susunod na sa kanyang commandments. Yun po yung pagkakasunod-sunod. Okay? Let's go back to Joshua. Verse 5. Verse 5. And it came to pass about the time of shutting of the gate, when it was dark, that the men went But the men went out. Whether the men went, I know not. For so after them quickly, for ye shall overtake them. But she had brought them up to the roof of the house and hid them with the stocks of flax. Yung flax, ito yung ginagamit sa paggawa ng linen. Sinas ko po ito. Para ito para siyang mga tanim. Na yun yung mga tanim na yun, tinakip sa kanila. Para itago sila, protektahan. And the men pursued after them. After them the way to the Yardan and to the fords. And as soon as they which pursued after them were gone out, they shut the gate. Verse 8. And before they were laid down, she came up upon them, upon the, up unto them upon the roof. And she said unto them, Si Rehab, nagsasalita, I know. Alam ko, may, may alam siya, may, may understanding. I know that Yahuwah has given you at the land. So yung isang pagan woman, alam niya na yung promised land binigay sa kanyang chosen people. Pero yung kanyang chosen people, naka-encounter lang ng konting pagsubok. Sa kanila binigay ang pangako, sila pa yung hindi nakaalala. Sila pa yung naging rebelde. Sila pa yung uh, gustong gumawa ng captain. Binigay si Moshe, binigay si Aaron. Pero gusto nilang gumawa ng isang leader. Sabi nga ni Preacher MB, talagang rebellion, rebellion niya. Anong sinabi ni, ni Samuel kay King Saul? Na yung pagre-rebelde ay kahalintulad na kasalanan ng witch. Parang ganun. Tapos, it's devil worship. So kung nagre-rebeld tayo, doon sa kuman ng Panginoon, eh hindi siya ang winong worship mo. Baka iba. Baka po iba. Pero siya, as pagan woman, alam niya. She has faith. At dahil dyan, nasave siya. Pero meron isang sign na ibibigay, pag-uusapan po natin maya maya. Okay? And uh, sabi dyan, and she said unto the man, I know that Yahuwah has given you at the land and that your terror is falling upon us and that all the inhabitants of the land faint nang hihina na kami dahil sa inyo. So parang nawawalan sila ng pag-asa. Okay? Natatakot sila. Kasi yan din ang sinabi ng Panginoon. Let's go to the Verim. Ako na lang. Pero kung gusto niyo po, sumabay, nasa Deuteronomy uh, chapter 2. Yung statement na yan na sinabi ng Panginoon 
Sayang ko po, Deuteronomy chapter 2 verse 24 to 25. Rise ye up, take your journey, and pass over at the river Arnon. Behold, I have given into your hand at Sihon, the Emory, king of Keshbon, and at his land, begin to possess it and contend with him in battle. This day will I begin to put the dread of you and the fear of you upon the nations that are under the whole heaven. So itong sinasabi ng Panginoong Yahuwa kay Moshe sa Israelites through Moshe na yung mga nation, yung mga nasa paligid sa inyo, matatakot sila sa inyo dahil sa protection na bibigay ko po sa inyo. At yun yung alam ni Rehab. Kaya sila, sinasabi niya na yung mga taga Jericho natatakot na sila. Sabi dyan, who shall report you and shall tremble and be in anguish because of you. So let's go back to Joshua. Sabi dyan, verse 10, For we have heard, napakinggan namin, at how Yahuwah dried up at the water of the Red Sea for you when you came out of Mitzrayim. So yung, so yung kwento ng pagtawid nila sa Red Sea, alam ni Rahab. But take note, hindi po siya Israelites noong time na yan. Isa po siyang pagan woman, pero alam niya na. Okay? Meron na siyang paniniwala na, na kayang ibigay talaga ng Panginoon yung promised land sa kanyang chosen people. Sabi pa dyan, And what he did unto the two kings of the Emorim, yung po yung binasa natin kanina, that were on other side of the Yardan, Sihon and Og, whom he utterly destroyed. And as soon as we had heard these things, our hearts did melt. Neither did there remain any more courage in any man. So in other words, wala na silang pag-asa. Para silang pawala ng pag-asa. Dahil sa takot nila doon sa mga Israelites, doon sa kanyang chosen people. Pero ito yung hindi makita ng mga nagre-reklamo na kung gaano sila pranotektahan ng Panginoon, kung gaano sila inalagaan yung promised land na pinangako kay Abraham pa lang. Pero hindi nila makita yon Pero itong pagan woman na ito, buti pa to Alam niya. At naniniwala siya. Ay bibigay sa kanila. Sabi po dyan, because of you, for Yahuwah, verse 11, for Yahuwah Elohim, He is Elohim in heaven above and in earth beneath. Verse 12, Now therefore I pray you, meron siyang isang hiling dito, si Rehab, I pray you swear unto me by Yahuwah, since I have showed you kindness, that you will also show kindness unto my father's house and give me a true sign. Okay? And that you will save alive at my father, and at my mother, and at my brethren, and at my sisters, and at all that they have, and deliver at our lives from that. So tinulungan ko kayo, okay, nireceive ko kayo. So siya ngayon humihingi siya ng pabor sa kanila. Okay, iligtas nyo, nawa. Kasi nga naniniwala siya na ibibigay talaga sa kanila yung Jericho. Sasakupin nila ito, mababasa po natin yan sa chapter 6. Sabi niya sa verse 14, And the man answered her, Our life is yours. If you utter not, if you utter not this, this at our business, so kung hindi mo lang ipagsasabi sa iba, and it shall be when Yahuwah has given us at the land that we will do kindly and truly with you. Then she let them down by a cord through the window for her house was upon the town wall and she built upon the wall and she said unto them get you to the mountain lest the pursuers meet you and hide yourself there three days so sabi ni Rehab magtago kayo para hindi kayo makita ng mga naghahabol sa inyo na naghahunting sa inyo magtago kayo for three days so yung three days na ito is like a uh, similar din uh, may pagkaparehas din po ito sa book of revelation na sinasabi ng Panginoon na itatago niya yung kanyang mga chosen people. Pero yun niya lang, three and a half year. Three and a half year po siya. Pero yun po din ang nakikita ko dito. Parang parallel po siya. Until the pursuers be returned and afterward may you go your way. Verse 17, And the men said unto her, We will be blameless of this your oath which you have made us swear. 
verse 18. Behold, when we come into the land, pag dumating na kami sa lupain, si Jericho, pag nasakop na namin, ito yung command nila sa kanya. Itali mo itong line, you shall bind at this line a scarlet thread in the window which you did let us down. And you shall bring at your father and at your mother and at your brethren and at your and at all your father's household home unto you. Yung mga kamag-anak mo, dalhin mo sila sa bahay nyo. Pero itong sign na bibigay ko sa iyo, itali mo doon sa bintana kung saan mo kami pinadaan. Uh, medyo magdedwell tayo dito sa dito po sa scarlet thread na ito. Dahil uh, na-reveal po sa akin dito, meron pong dalawa. Meron po akong dalawang puntos na nakita po dito. Uh, one is negative side and mayroon pong positive side. Kasi uh, una, alam natin na si Serehab ay isang uh, pagan woman. At uh, pagdating sa revelation, meron din po isang pagan woman doon na makikita natin na meron ding scarlet nito. So let's go to book of Revelation. Revelation chapter 17. Ito po yung negative side na na na, na reveal sa akin. Pero uh, correct nyo po ako kung mali. Pero ito po yung na-reveal sa akin na gusto ko. Pero mamaya meron siyang positive side. Pag-aaralan po natin. Sabi dyan sa Revelation chapter 17. Verse 1. Revelation chapter 17 verse 1. Ang context po na ito. Nakita ni Apostle John yung false woman. Verse 1. And there came one of the seven angels which had the seven vials and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show unto you the judgment of the great whore that sits upon many waters. Verse 2. With whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, kanino, doon sa false woman, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. Verse 3. So he carried me away in the ruach, in the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon scarlet. Colored beast, full of names, a blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet colored. So itong, itong pagan woman, yung false woman na nakita dito sa Revelation, ay meron po siyang suot-suot in purple and at the same time, scarlet color po. Ikita natin yung unibig sabihin. And deck with gold and precious stones and pearls having a golden cup in her hand full of, full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. So, ang, ang pagkakaunawa ko po dito on a negative side dito sa scarlet ay ang ibig niya pong sabihin ay karumihan, filthiness. Okay, and, uh, verse 5. And upon her forehead was name written, Mystery Babel the Great, the mother of harlots, the abomination of the earth. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the Kodeshim and with the blood of the martyrs of Yahusha. When I shall saw her, I wondered with great admiration. Pati si Apostle dyan, namangat din siya dito sa harlot woman na ito, na mayroong suot suot the purple and the scarlet color. So yun nga po ang Ang sabi ko nga po, pagkakaintindi ko po dito. So, na negative side, yung scarlet po ay ibig niya sabihin is filthiness, abomination. But on the positive side, dito sa scarlet na ito, ang ibig sabihin po na scarlet is uh, red color. Ito yung positive side naman. So, pwede din siya maging symbolize as blood na parang katulad nung sa Exodus yun nandun sila sa loob ng bahay uh, nilagyan ng, ng dugo ng lamb para hindi sila mamatay pero ito sa panahon ni, ni, ni Rahab nagtago din sila kasama ng kanyang mga mahal sa buhay at yung scarlet yun yung naging sign kasi magugunaw yung Jericho pero yung bahay nila hindi nasira Pero kailangan niyang isabit yung scarlet thread na yon 
doon sa bintana kung saan sila dumaan. So on a positive side, this is a picture of the blood of Yahushua HaMashiach. Okay. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 9. <clears throat> Hebrews chapter 9, verse 22. One verse lang po. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 22. Sabi po dyan. Verse 22. And almost all things are of the Torah purged with blood. And without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. In other words, kung walang, without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. So kaya inalay ng Panginoong Yahusha ang kanyang buhay. Tulad yan ang panalangin ni, ni Kuya Dani na ang kanyang banal na dugo ay dumanak sa puno ng Kalbaryo upang tayo ay malinis at maligtas by faith. So yung scarlet uh, on a positive side it's picture ng blood ng Panginoong Yahusha at together sa pananampalataya ni 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 Rehab siya po ay naligtas. It's like picture ng salvation po ang nakikita ko po dito. But kung meron uh, I believe may dadagdag po sila picture dito. Okay? So sana po tayo. Verse 19. And it shall be that whosoever shall go out of the doors of your house in the street his blood shall be upon his head. So ito yung kuman. Dalhin mo sila lahat sa loob ng bahay at yung kasunduan natin isabit mo doon sa bintana pero make sure wag mo sila palabasin okay and we kung lumabas sila eh sila may pananagutan sa sarili nila okay yun lang yung command and we will be guiltless and whosoever shall be with you in the house his blood shall be on our head if any hand be upon him verse 20 ngunit Kung ipagsasabi mo, and if you utter this at our business, then we will be free of your oath which you have made us to swear. And she said, according to your words, so be it. Anong ginawa niya? And she sent them away, and they departed right away. Sinunod niya. And she bound it, the scarlet line, in the window. So dito natin makikita na yung faith ni Rahab na nagligtas sa kanya, may action na kasama. Sinunod niya. Faith with action. Kaya nga, kung sasabihin natin na faith, faith na lang, lagi naman natin ito nakapakinggan kay na preacher, ay hindi po yun ang sinasabi ng scripture. Faith without works. Napakalino. Faith without works. Instead, huwag lang natin isarado ang puso natin. Hindi, hindi nagkocontradict yun sa Ephesians chapter 2. Ilagay lang po natin sa proper context yung writings ni Apostle Paul at i-connect natin yung sinabi ni Apostle James. Hindi po sila nagkocontradict. Okay? Verse 22. And they went and came unto the mountain and abode there three days. Katulad niya po na sinabi ko kanina, yung three days po na ito. Ito yung similar na mangyayari in the future na yung chosen people ng mga anak ay yung chosen people ni Yahuwa itatago niya sa wilderness for inya lang 3.5 years pero parehas pa rin halos parehas sila kasi yung nagtatago sila kasi merong gustong pumatay sa kanila o inahunting sila until the pursuers were returned and the pursuers sought them throughout all the way but found them not verse 23 so the men returned and descended from the mountain and passed over and came to Eliahusha, the son of life, the son of Don, and told them at all things that befell them. And they said unto Eliahusha, Truly, Yahuwah has delivered us, has delivered into our hands at all the land for even all the inhabitants of the country do faint because of us. So dito, good report na ang tanggap. Sa panahon ni Moshe, merong good report pero dalawa lang yung nagsasabi. At yung sampo, bad report. Pero dito sa dalawang ito, ay uh, uh, good report po nireport nila kay, kay Joshua. So, uh, bago po ako pumunta sa, nakagawa din po kasi ako ng 
ng parallel ng Panginoong Yahusha at ni Joshua sa second coming niya. But before that, ha, bigay ko muna kay na preacher yung Lord, baka po mayroon po kayong gustong idagdag. Salamat po. Exciting yung parallel, sir. Tuloy tayo. <laughs> okay po. Sige po. Tuloy po tayo sa parallel. Uh, una, first parallel nila ni Joshua or ni Yahusha. Siya din naman. Yun din naman po ang pangalan niya in Hebrew. At ang Panginoong Yahusha. Tulad niya na nasabi ko kanina. Uh, pangalan ng tatay ni, ni, ni Joshua ay Nun means life. So, he is the son of life. Si Joshua at Yahusha HaMashiach is the son of Elohim, which is the source of life. Okay? So, pangalawa, ang parallel po nila ay, syempre si Joshua po, warrior po siya. So, pagbalik din po ng Panginoong Yahusha, he will be a uh, warrior. Yun po sinabi sa Revelation. Let's go to Revelation. Uh, basahin lang po natin. Babasahin lang po natin. Revelation chapter 19. Sarap magbasa eh. I hope hindi po kayo boring. <clears throat> Revelation chapter 19. <clears throat> okay. Revelation chapter 19 verse 11. Sabi po dyan, And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. And in righteousness, and in righteousness he judges and make, makes war. His eyes were flame, were as flame of fire, and his uh, and his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew, but he himself. Sino tinutuwa niya po dito? Verse 13, malalaman natin. And he was clothed with a vesture deep in blood, and his name is called the word of Elohim. So that is Yahusha HaMashiach. Verse 14, And the armies which were in the heaven followed him after the white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goes a sharp sword. Ano sinabi sa book of Hebrews? The word of Yahuwah is sharp-edged sword. Yun po ang alala. Alala ko po. That, that with he that with he should smite the nations and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treads the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Yahuwah Shivaot. And he has on his vesture and on his thigh the name written King of Kings and Yahuwah Adonai. And I saw an angel standing in the sun and he cried with a loud voice saying to all the foes that fly in the midst of heaven, come and gather yourselves together into the supper of the great Elohim, that you may eat the flesh of kings and the flesh of captains, and the flesh of the mighty men, and the flesh of horses, and of them that sit on them, and the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. And the beast was taken, and within the false prophet that wrote miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast and them that worship his image. This boat were cast alive into the lake, into a lake of fire burning with brimstones. And the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse, which sword proceeded out of his mouth. And all the foes were filled with their flesh. So, yun po nakita natin sa Panginoong Yahusha. He will destroy yung mga makikipaglaban sa kanya in the future. And then pangalawa, pinadala po ni Joshua yung, yung dalawang spies. And at the same time, Yahusha, or uh, ibig sabihin ng kanyang pangalan, Yahuwah is salvation. Pinadala niya din po yung two witnesses. Nasa Revelation chapter 11 po yan. Hindi ko na po siya mabasahin. At alam naman, na, alam naman natin po yun kung sino po yung two witnesses. Okay, yun po yung dalawang olive tree. Tama po ba ako? Hindi lang pagkakalala ko. At number three, 
nung sinakop nila yung Jericho, Joshua, dumating sila with trumpeting. Sabi nga ng Panginoon, sumigaw kayo, uh, tumunog yung trompeta. At same din po, sa pagdating ng Panginoong Yahusha, Yahusha will come with trumpeting. Mababasa po natin yan sa Book of Matthew 24, saka sa 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Sahin nyo na lang po. At last, ang paralel nila, si Joshua, dinala po niya yung mga Israelites sa promised land at pagbalik ng Panginoong Yahusha. Igagather niya yung, dalawa, yung, yung, yung mga Israelites at ililid niya pabalik sa promised land. Let's go to John, John chapter 10. John chapter 10 verse 14 to 16. Sabi niya po dito. John John chapter 10 verse 14 to 16. I am the good shepherd and know my sheep. So ano ang ginagawa ng shepherd is nililid niya yung flocks. Okay, para hindi sila mas scattered. At ang Panginoong Yahusha is our good shepherd. I know my sheep and I'm known of mine as the Father knows me. Even so, know I the Father and I lay down my life for the sheep. And other sheep I have which are not of this fold. Them also, my, them also I must bring. Maari ang tinutukan niya dito yung lost tribe. Okay? Sabi niya meron pa ako mga sheep na wala dito pero dadalhin ko din sila gather ko din sila in the future and they shall hear my voice and there shall be one fold and one shepherd okay so matatapos na po ako uh, in closing bago ko po ibigay kina preacher let's go to to book of Jude ang, ang aking closing remark po ay uh, parallel po siya sa sa ating Torah portion Jude, Jude chapter 1 One, ver- one chapter lang naman po yan. Jude chapter 1 verse 5. I will therefore put you in remembrance, though ye once knew this, how that Yahuwah, having saved, saved the people out of the land of Misraim, afterward, destroy them that believe not. So alam natin, nakita po natin yung kwento na yan. Hindi po sila lahat nakapasok. At Nakita din po natin yan sa book of Hebrews. Ngayon, pinapakita din po sa book of Jude. Because of their unbelief or lack of faith, ay sad to say, hindi po sila lahat nakapasok. Ang, ang, ang Hebrew name po ng faith is imuna. Ang ibig niya pong sabihin ay steadfastness. So, kung hindi lang talaga siya, it's like faith, faith lang. So, may, ibig, mas, may mas malalim po siyang ibig sabihin na kung talaga nananampalataya tayo kailangan hindi parang alon kung saan yung hangin na da, nagdadala-dala na kung baga walang ugat so dapat uh, yung pundasyon ng ating faith ay ang Torah o ang salita ng Panginoon dahil ang salita ng Panginoon yan ang maglilid sa atin pabalik sa promise land so I hope and pray mga kapatid Salamat sa pagkakataon. Salamat kay Abba, Yahuwa, na makapag-share po ng salita ng Panginoon. All the glory and praise belong to Yahuwa. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Sir Ivan. Sir, may dadagdag ko pa. Or, oh na. Okay. <laughs> Alright, may konti lang po akong part na pwede pa nating mas matutunan dito sa sa ating haptara. Actually, uh, honestly, nung binabasa ko po itong part ng Book, book of Joshua sa chapter 2, uh, babalikan natin yung ating pinag-aaralan sa ating Torah portion. And kung titingnan natin, when uh, Moshe sent 12 spies, at alam natin yung buong, buong kwento yun, alam natin yung buong nangyari, na sampu, pangit yung report, dalawa yung maganda yung report. But after, let's say after another 39 years, still the people, eto, here specifically si Joshua, is still nandun pa rin yung, alam mo yun, yung spy game, na it doesn't work 
according to according to Yahweh's one on the first time na ginawa nila at nung papasok na sila nandoon na lang sila sa kabilang sa kabilang sa kabilang part nasa gitna nila yung Jordan River at sa kabila yung Jericho and still they are playing this spy game so honestly ako po hindi ko maintindi hindi ko naiintindihan kung bakit ganun yung ganun yung ginawa nila and i have a different approach here na kung titingnan natin uh, namatay si Moses and here comes a new leader Joshua at an instruction sa kanya ng Panginoon kailangan maging matapang ka kailangan maging matatag ka and the only way to do that is basahin mo yung instruction ko paulit-ulit araw-araw gabi-gabi right para maging para maging maayos at maging matagumpay ka and you have a good success kasi ikaw na ngayon yung bagong leader eh huwag mong kakalimutan yung instruction ko and if you put yourself on that situation na wala yung leader namin na wala na si Moshe and ako ngayon yung bagong leader and 39 years kaming nagpaikot-ikot sa wilderness the first time nagkaroon kami ng spy game na to nang na, na, nagpadala kami ng spy is yung mga kasama kong sampo, pangit yung report, and that's the main reason kung bakit nag-stay kami ng 40 years sa wilderness. Remember our lesson na for 40 days is equals to 40 years na nagpaikot-ikot sila? Na kung tutusin, is dapat straightway lang. It's a matter of two weeks maximum, nandun na sila sa promised land. Pero dahil nga sa maling report, eh, basically, sa, sa, sa hindi pagtitiwala sa Panginoon, kasi pinangako na to ng Panginoon eh. Inyo na yung land na yan. And despite the fact na napakarami ng miracles na ginawa ng Panginoon, napakaraming sign ng ginawa ng Panginoon na ako yung, pinak- ako yung makapangyarihan, ako gumawa nung meron kayo ngayon, way back into Egypt, nakita nyo kung, 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 ano, kung ano yung kaya kong gawin, way back on the Red Sea, nakita nyo kung ano yung kaya kong gawin, and here again, still they are playing this spy game. It seems like, And alam niyo po 'yon, parang andun yung kaba na kaya ba namin 'to? This is the first time na papakapos papasok kami ng promised land. Kakayanin ba namin 'to? And let's see kung ano yung sitwasyon doon sa loob ng land na papasukin namin. Ano ba yung moral ng mga tao doon sa loob? At ito yung ito yung gustong maging report nila ni Joshua. And yan po yung naging report sa last part ng chapter 2 basically. Pero bago nagkaroon ng report na ganyan, sino ang nag-emphasize niyan? na ganito kami rito. Na narinig namin, nabasa namin sa social media, sa Facebook, kung ano yung nangyari sa inyo 40 years ago. And sino ang nagtetestimony? Sino ang nagpapatunay? A harlot. A Gentiles. And that speaks a lot sa ating mga kapatid. Right? That speaks a lot sa ating mga, let's say, hindi natin matrack back kung Israelites ba talaga tayo, kung part tayo ng, lost, ng ten lost tribe. Eh, ito ang sinasabi ng scriptures. But before that, kailangan, kailangan ba talagang magkaroon ng spy game? So, that's a different approach na, tininit na tinit, ng, tinit, ng, tinitingnan ko po rito nang binasa ko yung part na to, Na, hindi pa ba tayo natuto 40 years ba? Yan nga yung reason kung bakit tayo hindi bas hindi agad nakapasok ng promised land di ba All right so that's something a different approach na pwede niyo pong i-consider na sabi nga po sa sa Brett Hadesha those things is written para may matutunan tayo para may mapulot po tayong aral All right now in verse 5 Okay bago ako bumalik bukunta ng verse 5 Yung Jericho po as I mentioned a while ago It's between Jordan River, nandito sila sa kabilang side, at yung Jericho na sa kabilang side. Ang nakakalungkot po ngayon, yung Jericho po, hindi na po sakop ng Israel yan. Right? In our time, ang Jericho po ngayon, isakop po ng Palestinian. Right? And uh, iyan, iyan, iyan isa sa mga, pag, pag napunta po tayo ng Israel, yan isa sa mga nakakalungkot ng pangyayari kasi they know exactly what happened on that time sa panahon ni Moshe pero ngayon hindi sila makapasok doon sa, sa, sa land na yon sa Jericho area right hindi sila makapasok doon kasi yun nga medyo hindi hin, hindi medyo but it's in reality na may conflict between the Palestinian and the and, and the Israelites until now sa panahon natin so hindi sa kanila yan ang tinatawag po yung area na ngayon na West Bank 
Okay? Dalawa po yung land na meron ang Palestinian, meron dito sa taas banda, West Bank. If I may share my screen para mas makita natin sa map. Ay, konting geography lang po ito. Habang nag-aaral po tayo. Ano na nakikita niyo po? Okay naman, sir. Alright. So, it... ayan. Medyo lalakihan ko lang po ang tech. Nandito po kami sa Jeddah. Yung mga kapatid natin is nandyan sa UAE. Somewhere there. And yung mga nasa Pilipinas is nandyan kayo sa Pilipinas. But Israel is here. Alright. Ito po yung Israel. Ayan. Yung maliit na portion na yan. At kung titingnan ninyo, yung buong paligid yan for Arab countries na. Alright. This part, itong may da dotted lines na yan, that is the West Bank. Tinatawag na West Bank ngayon. Yung lower part na to dito, sa may banda sa may dagat, tinatawag na Gaza. Alright. And yan po yung area ngayon na sakop ng mga Palestinian. The rest is for the Israelites. Right, Gaza Strip, yan po is Palestinian territory. West Bank is Palestinian territory. And right now, ang Jericho po is nandito. Alright, i-zoom ko. Nandito po yung Jericho. Alright, yung Jerusalem is nandito. Sako po ng Israel, kantong-kanto ng area ng West Bank at ng Israel, yung Jerusalem, yung city ng Jerusalem. At yung Jericho nandito. Yung Jordan River is ito, na nagkokonekta sa Dead Sea at sa Sea of Galilee. Yung Sea of Galilee is nandun po sa unahan. Ayun, yun, yun, yung kung saan maraming pangyayari dyan. Kinatawag ding Tiberias. Alright? So, yung Jericho is, is nandito. At kung makikita nyo po, malaki yung plain area na yan, yung patag na area. And that, that's one of the reasons kung bakit dyan sila tumawid. Kasi imagine how many millions of people, around 2 million plus people na tatawid from this area sa Aman, Jordan, going to Israel, and this is the, the reasonable area para makatawid sila. And right now, nakakalungkot kasi yung mismong mga Israelites, hindi yung makapasok dyan. Okay? So that's part na pagdating ng Panginoong Yahusha, is ibabalik din sa kanila yung lupa na yan. Alright, now, going back sa ating pinag-aaralan, just to emphasize that sa panahon natin para mas nauunawaan nauunawa, po natin kung ano yung mga nangyayari. Going back sa ating pinag-aaralan, sa, sa verse 5 po, ang sabi po dyan, it came to pass about the time of shutting of the gate when it was dark, that the men went out, whether the men went out not, I would not, pursue after them quickly for we shall overtake them. This is a bit uh, sidetrack lang kasi kung titingnan ninyo is Nung time na isasarado na ng gate, nakapasok na yung dalawang spy sa loob and sinasabi dyan, when it was dark that the men went out and hindi ko ma maalis sa isip ko yung panahon ni Nehemaya that during the time that it was dark, eh, sinasarado na yung gate. If you are familiar sa Pilipinas, meron tayong area dyan, I think sa Intramuros, na yung mga city po dati, okay, yung mga city dati, including, including dito sa Saudi Arabia, yung mga city rito is gated city. Okay? Hindi ka basta-basta makakapasok. So makintitin ngayon, maraming walls pa ikot. Sa intramuros, maraming walls pa ikot. And the only way para makapasok ka sa loob ng city is dadaan ka sa gate. Ganito po yung itsura ng mga panahon nila. Alright? Ang tawag sa mga bahay na nasa labas ng wall is mga villages. Pero yung nasa loob ng wall mismo, they call it a city. So dito, is sinasabi niya, pagdating ng madilim, pagdating ng magdidilim, is nagsasarado yung gate na yan. Alright, bakit ko po pinag-uusapan to? Kasi sabi po sa Nehemiah verse ter chapter 13 verse 19, and it came to pass when the gates of Jerusalem began to dark. Before the Sabbath, I commanded that the gates should be shut and charged that they should not be opened till after the Sabbath. And some of my servants set, set I at the gates that there should, not there should no burden be brought in on the Sabbath day. So part po ng, ng nakikita ko po rito pag sinarado yung gate is I just want to emphasize na yung Sabbath nag start sa gabi. Whether we like it or not, eh, sinabi po ng scriptures, eh, anong magagawa natin? Yan ang sinabi sa book of Nehemiah. Not unless Nehemiah is wrong, 
o yung magsulat ng Nehemiah is wrong, but it clearly says there na kapag nagdilim, sinasarado yung gates kasi magsasabat na ang bawal magkaroon ng transaction. Alright, that's one thing na I want to point out sa so verse 5 na pag sinasarado yung gate, pag gabi, is sabat na po. Alright, now let's go sa mga susunod na verses. Uh, verse 9, as I mentioned a while ago, na kung titing niyo, sabi dyan, and she said unto the men, I know that Yahweh had given you the land and that your, and that your terror is falling upon us and that all the inhabitants of the land paint because of you. And sino ang nagtetestify dito? A prostitute, an harlot, si Rahab. Na kung titignan natin, hindi ba ito alam ng mga Israelites? Why still they're playing the spy game? Tingnan natin kung ano yung ginagawa nila. 39 years ago, nung tumawid sila ng Red Sea, ano ang kinakanta nila? Exodus chapter 15. Exodus chapter 15. This is the time na makatawid sila ng Red Sea and nagkakantahan sila. Ansaya-saya po nila. I'll just read verse, verse 14. Sabi dyan, The people shall hear and be afraid. Sorrow shall take hold on the inhabitants of the Palestina. Then the dukes of Edom shall be amazed. The mighty men of Moab, trembling, shall take hold upon them. All the inhabitants of Canaan shall melt away. So sinasabi nila, habang nung makatawid sila ng Red Sea, ito ang mangyayari sa mga lupain na masasakop na ibinigay sa amin ng Panginoon. All right? The inhabitants of Canaan, which is part is Jericho, ang sabi nila, they shall melt away. And ito yung sinasabi ni Rahab. Eh. Now, for we have heard how Yahweh dried up the water of the Red Sea for you, that's in verse 10, when ye came out of Egypt, and what ye did unto the two kings of the Amorites that were in the other side, Jordan, Sihon, and Og, whom ye utterly destroyed. So basically, Kali, itong Gentiles na to, narinig lang, narinig yung kwento, narinig yung mga nangyari, and he, she is just testifying right now dun sa mismong naka-experience ng pangyayari. And can you imagine that? Ang mismong naka-experience ng pangyayari, tumigas ang ulo. Ayaw sumunod. Alright, fast forward tayo. Thousands of years past, dumating ang Panginoong Yahushua. Ano ang sinabi niya kay Thomas? Mapalad ang mga tao na naniniwala pero hindi nakita. The same message ng Panginoong Yahusha. The same message na binibigay sa atin ngayon nung pinag-aaralan nating haptara. Mapalad ang mga tao na naniniwala pero hindi. Experience, hindi nakita. Napakasarap lang po maunawaan na ibinalik tayo ng Panginoon sa tamang paniniwala. They base their faith on their experience pero hindi hindi stable, nagwi-waver. But this lady, an harlot woman, she just she just she, she based her, her faith dun sa narinig niya. Ayun po yung faith. Faith is the things hoped for substance of the things that see. Now, mas malinaw yun. Hindi mo man nakita. And that is faith. But, again, as, as Brother Ivan mentioned, and he reiterated on that na, hindi enough yung, ay, my faith ako, and within five, alam niyo po yun, lagi nating napag-uusapan yun, na, ay, I have faith in God. I will go to heaven when I die. Kailangan kasama yung paggawa na naaayon sa utos ng Panginoon. Alright, kailangan kasama yun. Alright, now, let's move forward. Last part is, ang instruction is, pag iwanan nyo dyan sa bintana yung scarlet na, scarlet na part, twine or cord or line. And pag pumasok kami, is maaalala namin kayo. And tuma- nagtago sila sa Sa, sa hills on three days and kung titingnan nyo po yung mapa there's only one way na pwede silang puntahan within three days para magtago sila anong sabi dyan in the hill, in the mountain pag binalikan nyo yung mapa nandun sila sa area ng plain at pag pumunta kayo sa hill, sa mountains that's going to Jerusalem that's the direction going to Jerusalem which Yahuwah put his name okay? alright so 
Lagi naman nating every time na mababanggit yung three days, yung seven days, there is always a parallel sa mga pinag-aaralan po natin. Now, another word na pwede na pwede ko pong pwede ko pong ma-share sa inyo, yung word po na line. All right? Sinabi diyan, uh, I, I believe in verse 18. Sinabi diyan is behold when we come into the land, thou shalt bind this line of scarlet thread in the window which thou didst let us down by and thou shalt bring thy father and thy mother and thy brethren and all thy father's household home and to thee so yung word po na line is pag binalikan natin sa hebrew it is also the same as hope ang word po in hebrew is tikva or we can call it tikwa okay that means hope and ang ganda lang kasi If you go in Israel and isa po ito sa 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 maaamis ka yung title po ng kanilang national anthem is Ha Tikwa or Hatikva which is the hope. So yung scarlet thread na nandoon nakalaylay sa bintana that's a hope. Hope ni no. Hope nitong mga Gentiles na to na ang kanilang pag-asa isang Panginoong Yahuwah. That's the only way that you will be. You will be experiencing the goodness of the land and you will be experiencing kung gaano ka, ka powerful, kung gaano ka makapangyarihan at kung gaano tayo kamahal ng Panginoon. Right? The word is tikwa, it means cord line which is also means hope. Okay? Yan ang pag-asa. Alright. As you always hear sa ating mga pinag-aaralan, the whole people, yung, yung kaligtasan, yung salvation, in-offer sa lahat. Just like sa picture na pinag-aaralan natin ngayon. Pero hindi lahat nakapasok ang promise na. Same din po sa atin ngayon. Kaligtasan, in-offer sa lahat, nagdanak ang kanyang dugo, yes, tinubos niya tayo. Yes. Ibinigay niyo niya kanyang buhay. Question is, tatanggapin ba natin? And magpapatuloy ba tayo sa paggawa ng kasalanan at pagsuway sa kanyang mga utos dahil tinubos niya tayo? Salamat sa Panginoon and praise Yahuwa. Salamat sa Panginoon sa mga nakikinig po at sa mga kusum- lagi natin kasama sa ating programa, sa ating pag-aaral na Yahuwa open our eyes on those things na hindi pa natin alam. On those wondrous things out of His instruction, out of His Torah. And if, if I may add, uh, nadaanan natin kanina yung Revelation. Nabasa po ni Brother Ivan yung Revelation. Meron din ni Scarlet Thread, yung Babylon. And that's mainly the reason kung bakit ang gulo-gulo ng mundo ngayon. Ang gulo-gulo naman. We are very confused kung ano ba talaga yung mensahe ng Panginoon. Why? Because merong nanggugulo. Right? Meron pong fake. Meron ding may Scarlet Thread. Kaya kailangan maingat po tayo at kailangan aralin talaga natin, hingi natin ang gabay ng banal, banal na spirito ng Ruach HaKodesh na ipaunawa niya sa atin ito ng maayos, ng, ng maayon sa kanyang scriptures. And praise Yahuwah po talaga kasi we are part once in that Babylonian system that we are very proud that we are also, na, alam niyo na ligtas ako eh. Kami lang yung maliligtas, kailangan, sum- kailangan yung sumapit sa dinaminasyon namin. Kasi kami lang yung papunta ng langit. So, yan po, yan po yung, yan po, ganyan ka, ganyan ka, deceiving si Hasatan, the adversary. Ganyan, ganyan siya, katriki, na kokopyahin niya. Magagawa siya ng, parehas lang po yan sa ating mga, sa, ating, sa mga instruction, pagdating sa worship service, pagdating, pagdating sa pananambahan. Gagawa ng copy-paste, or ng, hindi copy-paste, but gagawa ng another thing na akala natin yun na talaga. Pero ang totoo, hindi. That's the scarlet thread na meron yung harlot, harlot sa Revelation. Alright? And another thing, na sinabi din po ni, ni Brother Ivan, that Yahushua will come back as a warrior, then he will he will have war with those with those pagan practices. Yes, and that's one of the reason kung bakit po yung ating kapatid na Yahudim ngayon, yung mga Juda is hindi somehow naniniwala dun sa unang dumating na Yahusha, which is Yahusha Masiya, na nagligtas. Why? Because the first time that he comes, he is meek. 
He is humble like Moshe. And he is a servant. And ang hinihintay nila, someone who will magtatapos ng kanilang paghihirap. Right? That's the Messiah that they are waiting for. But when the time comes na bumalik ang Panginoong Yahushua and conquer the land as a warrior that na mabasa natin sa Revelation, then the two stick will become one. And I'm, 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 I'm excited po ako pagdating ng panahon na yan na mauunawaan natin pare-parehas, sabay-sabay kung sino talaga. Yes, binibigay niya sa atin ng pagkakaunawa ngayon but I'm getting excited makasama natin yung ating mga kapatid na Yehuda, mga Yehudibs, na ito ang Panginoon ko. Siya yung warrior, siya yung king, siya yung high priest, siya yung gumawa ng lahat ng ito. And salamat po, salamat sa pagkakataon na makapag-serve po sa inyo at makapag, makapag-share ng salita ng Panginoon sa inyo. And by tomorrow, meron tayong bagong toro portion and it's getting exciting and exciting and exciting. Sir? Amen, amen. Thank you, Brother Gary. Thank you, Brother Ivan. Brother Danny, may nais ka bang idagdag bago po wakasan ang ating pag-aaral ngayon? Araw na ito. Magandang umaga po ulit. Ayun lang, uh, parang ka sa atin lang. Tayo ay naging isang uh, naging isang prostitute din tayo. Dati, kumbaga yung mga fathers din natin, di ba? Na hanggang sa napunta sa ating generation na pumuwalay na tayo. Na nawala na tayo nagpapasalamat tayo at bumalik na binalik tayo meron yung mga yung ating mga paunawa ang mga 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 nababasa natin ngayon kasi na ang nangyari ngayon uh, real talk talaga na ang mangyayari kasi natin na mali na natin itong mga nababasa natin at nag, di, parang yung mga nakikita natin ngayon mga sinasabi natin ngayon sa kanila eh tayo ngayon ay na, tayo ngayon ang nagdi-deceive. Baliktad na ngayon tayo ngayon. Totoo lang 'yun naman na nangyayari kasi nadudun tayo sa dating uh, dati sa Babylon. Kasi 'yun nga ang 'yun nga ang mas malakas ngayon. Kumbaga 'yun ang may mas malakas, mas malaking uh, simbahan. So ngayon ang 'yun ay nating pinapaniwalaan. Ngayon tayo ko konti lang ngayon. Eh hindi naman tayo nag paano ba nga ba naman tayo eh po one year pa lang naman tayo almost nagbabasa. Pero sinasabi nga niya na nasusulat na tayo paano nga tayo paano tayo hindi hindi tayo madedeceive. Kumbaga, kumbaga halos lahat na ano na naging uh, nag na, na magulo na. Magulo na ang mga words. Ngunit Pasalamat tayo at na nakita natin itong uh, ang mga passage na ito. At ganun nga, um, kahit na bumili tayo, bumili tayo ng maraming sepher, maraming uh, scripture, kung hindi naman natin ito bubuksan at mababasa at magbabasa at mamumuhay ng naayon sa kanyang salita, baliwala ang lahat na ito mga kapatid. Yan lang po. Maraming maraming salamat po. Amen, amen. Thank you, Brother Danny. So let me just close a couple of notes that I wanted to add. Of course, yung scarlet uh, na banggit dito ni Brother Gary uh, in Revelation chapter 17, verse 4. It says there, And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication and upon her forehead was a name written mystery babylon the great the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth all caps put sa aking bible yan so as brother gary have said merong merong fake and this is counterfeit pag may, alam niyo po pag bumibili tayo ng ginto ay minsan naluloko tayo ng counterfeit lalo na kung binili natin sa mga tabi-tabi tapos na, nadala tayo paano tayo na loko nadala tayo ng magaling ng pag magaling na pagbebenta tama magaling na pananalita sell stock na akala mo ang nabili mo 
22 karat na na gold ay nabili mo pala gold plated lang. All right, nung nilubog mo sa suka ay nanilaw yung suka. So, ganun po ang uh, ganun po ang deception. And a fake will always look like an original. All right? So, mag-ingat po tayo because it's sabi diyan, it's a mystery, Babylon. Mystery confusion, the great and sa pag-aaral natin nagsimula na, nagsimula to sa so Genesis pa lang. All right, nagsimula to in the Tower of Babel and uh, from then on Abraham even his brother was confused, sino bang susundin susundin ko ang Panginoon ba ni Abraham or si si Nimrod and then eventually he took his chances at uh, I think uh, pag okay si Abraham kaysa sama ako sa kanya. So within his heart, he, he didn't decide really. And uh, that leads us to the question, what is the word believe? Ano ba talaga ang ibig sabihin ng word na believe? Naalala ko to. We had a previous uh, preacher who always emphasized believe, believe, believe. All right. So ngayon mas, uh, I believe I'll set this for our study tomorrow I'll set the scene for the study tomorrow kasi marami po talaga tayo dapat maunawaan in the book of numbers when it comes to Yahusha Hamashiach now the book of Leviticus as we can see yun po ay libro ng mga uh, mga batas mga utos ng Panginoon and then numbers is where they are in the wilderness Deuteronomy is all about the words all right it's all about reminding them what was told Uh, in Exodus, in Leviticus, so nire-remind. Pero yung numbers is the actual, uh, kumbaga, ito yung practicum nila. Eh. And uh, marami po, grabe po ang kayamanan ng salita ng Panginoon when it comes to the book of numbers. And uh, pag naunawaan po natin kung sino si Moshe, kung sino si Aharon, kung sino ang mga tao in the book of numbers, then it will be easier, it will be simpler to understand the Brit Hadashah. Now, we'll study the word imuna. We'll study the word believe later on. But before I go there, let's go back to the word na rekab. All right? Rekab. Rakab. Rakab. Rekab. Americanized na eh. And nung mas naging English pa, naging rahab na lang. Rehab. So, rakab. All right? Actually, if you, you, you search the word rakab, it's all throughout the Tanakh. And what it means, it's broad. Malawak, but more than broad, it's uh, large. All right? So, malawak siya. And if you go to Psalm 119, verse 96, if you know the verse, I have seen an end of all perfection, but thy commandments is exceeding broad. The same word rakab was used in the word broad. So basically, lang sinasabi niya, ang mitzvot ko ay rakab, malawak. But, katulad ng in-explain ni Brother Ivan kanina, may positive, may negative side. Broad can also mean proud. Alright? Proud. If you go to Proverbs chapter 21, Proverbs chapter 21, verse 4. Proverbs chapter 21, verse 4, sabi dyan, a high look arakab heart and the plowing of the wicked is sin well if you replace that with the word large it will still make sense but on a negative note kasi kanina ang sinasabi the mitzvot or the commandments are rakab pero ang sinasabi dito pag ang puso mo ay rakab alright or katulad nung Uh, ginamit na word dun sa uh, presumptuous when he lift when you lift up yourself to Yahuwah. So ito yung sinasab- ang sinasabi dito and it starts with the first word first two words na a high look. So mayabang na yung dating and a large heart, a broad heart. So kumbaga maraming laman yung puso na dahil broad eh. <laughs> or baka walang laman yung puso. Either way It says, it's a proud heart and the plowing of the wicked. So, uh, just connecting all the dots and uh, doon sa mga sinabi ng ating mga kapatiran, katulad na sinabi ni Brother Gary, uh, sorry, ni Brother Danny, okay, ni Brother Danny, 
na dati rin tayong harlot. And if you put it into that context, we can be proud, we can be boastful, but Rahab, Rahab was given a chance to be saved from the battle of Yarko. All right, through that scarlet thread. So scarlet thread, marami din uh, insights, but uh, I leave the, the ones that were discussed by Brother Gary and Brother Ivan earlier. Okay, so napakaganda po na malaman natin na yes, we, I will admit as, as a former Baptist preacher, I was proud. I was actually proud debating in the streets about the Trinity, about, you know, kung anong nalalaman natin. Pero ang salita po ng Panginoon, when we started Torah, it just humbled me down and I'm still in the process of humbling down. Pero yun nga po, madami tayong kailangan malaman. Alright, and that leads me to the last lesson this morning, which, dahil walang PowerPoint, ay sulat point na lang. Okay? Pero hindi ako yung naka-full screen. Ako ba yung naka-full screen, mga kapatid? <laughs> Ako? <laughs> All right. Sa, sa kanila yata uh, ako. So, the word believe. Uh, I am lang. Sa atin lang yan. Okay. The word, ah, ito pala yung camera. Tinata, tinatapat ko dun sa computer. Ito pala yung camera sa gilid ko. <laughs> All right. The word believe. What does it mean? Okay? Anong ibig sabihin ng believe? Ah... Uh, Sino ang nakakaalam kung ano to sa Hebrew? Any sa ating mga kapatiran kasi sabi sa John 3:16 for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth on him should not perish but have everlasting life. All right? So makikita nyo, dahil Greek 'yon ay makikita nyo na hindi po Hebrew kasi nga Greek. All right. Does anybody know who knows uh, from the man on the screen? Ang nakakauna, nakakaalam kung ano yung word na believe? Imuna. Sorry? Imuna po ba? Imuna. All right. We'll go to that word because imuna is faith. Faithful. All right. So we'll connect the dots here para mas maunawaan. Thank you, Brother Ivan, for that. Yes, imuna is Uh, a word that comes from uh, actually believe is coming from the word imuna. Now, what is the root word of emuna? Aman. Ang sinasabi natin, amen. All right, aman. And in the Hebrew, marunong na po ako magsulat. All right, intindihin nyo, hindi nga lang ox head, para siyang uh, snail head. <laughs> Parang snail, sir. <laughs> Pero sa opta, nagkakaunawaan na tayo. Alam nyo, kaya, kaya nagkagulang mundo kasi dahil din sa mga sulat ng tao. So, nung una, Axed, eh siguro, pangit yung sulat nung sumunod. Kaya naging snail, naging kabayo, naging palabaw. <laughs> All right. So, these are the main letters of the word believe. Okay? So, the word believe in the Greek is pithyu. Alright? G4100. You can write that down. G4100. If you go to Hebrews chapter 11, what is the word that uh, continuously, <laughs> that you read continuously? Faith. And that word is pistis. Alright? Pistis. And that word is coming from the root word pisyu. So it's, it's like imuna coming from the root word. Kung marunong po kayong magbasa, ano, nababasa niyo ba yung sulat ko? Aleph. What's that? Aleph, Mem, and Nun. Alright? And it actually shows us something. Actually, mukha mas maganda yung una kong sinulat. So, ayan. Mas mukha ba yan? Baka? <laughs> Alright. Uh, kaya, saka matiguturuan mo si Kuya Zik mag uh, otiot. Baka mas magaling pa kay Tito MD niya. All right, so we got the Aleph, the Mem, and the Noon. Aleph represents headship. We've got the Noon, the out, outside letters as the seed. So it actually, kung babalik tayo sa pinag-aralan natin kanina, Yahusha HaMashiach uh, is coming from the seed of life. All right, just like Yahusha, the son of Noon. 
So makikita natin, Aleph Nun, uh, representing the outside letters, which is the picture. And then Mem is what? Mem is water or goes with the flow. All right? So basically, Amun is going with the flow, I believe, with the Father, who is the source of life. Okay? So, source of life, uh, flowing with the Father, and believe, believing. Okay? So, we've got the word believe, pero babalik tayo sa tanong, ano nga bang ibig sabihin ng believe at ng faith? Kasi paulit-ulit ito sa New Testament, mga kapatid. Whosoever believeth in Him will have everlasting life. I should not perish, but have everlasting life. Alright? So, pag pinag-aralan niyo po yung verse na yon, at nagbasa na kayo ng revelation, the word perish there is who is the destroyer in revelation? Apollyon. And in Hebrew, what is his name? Abaddon. Ay, magkaparehong magkapareho because the word perish there is apoli. And the word in Hebrew of perish, if you remember our lesson about Shelak, na sinabi nila kay Moshe, ay siguradong we will perish, we will perish. I believe that's in uh, number chapter 14. The word perish is abad. Alright? So naging tao lang sa Revelation, kaya siya naging abadon, uh, and naging apolyon. So apolyon, so makikita ngayon natin, dito ko, dito ko na-apply ngayon yung Greek tsaka yung Hebrew when we use the word the, the Bible uh, the Septuagint Bible alright so ano nga bang ibig sabihin ng faith? faith? believe now if you have a Sefer Bible when you read the verily verily in the New Testament it's actually amen amen so anong sinasabi ng Panginoon? believe believe Alright? Verily, verily, na trace natin that it's amen, amen. You go to the Hebrew, uh, sorry, you go to the Greek, it's actually amen in the Greek. Tapos pinalitan in English, gawin nalang natin verily, verily. Uh, para mas maging English-sized. But, wala pong mali na ibalik yung amen, amen. Now, we're, we're, may tinutuntun po tayo because believe, faith, are coming from the same word pisu, pistis, okay, same root, just like amain and amuna. All right, amuna, amain, amuna, amain means believe, and it also means faith. Pag nabasa niyo yung faithful, most of the time it's amuna, okay, and it's the same letters as. Aleph, Mem, Nun. So, what are we trying to point out? Let's go to Numbers chapter 14. Numbers chapter 14. Ngayon, kung may tanong po kayo, itanong nyo na po ngayon pagkatapos ng ating service in the comments. Because tomorrow, I will continue on this topic as we go on to the Torah portion of Korak. All right. Korak. 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 And then we go number chapter 14, verse 11. Okay? Number 14, verse 11. Anong sabi ng Panginoon dito? And Yahuwah said unto Moshe, how long will this people provoke me? And how long will it be ere they among me? Hanggang kailan? Now this is a question asked by Yahuwah himself. Yahuwah. Alright? Kasi napaka-importante na makilala natin kung sino si Yahuwah, kung sino si Moshe, and ganun din sa ating panahon kung sino si Yahuwah at kung sino si Yahushua HaMashiach, sino ang Ruach HaKodesh, because here, who is talking? It's Yahuwah. Alright? And he's asking Moshe. He's telling Moshe, hanggang kailan nila ako ipoprovoke? Because a lot of people today are provoking Yahuwah. Why? Because they don't want to believe in Yahuwah. They don't want to believe in 
uh, they don't want to aman Yahuwah. All right? They don't want to go with the flow to the seed of life, uh, the, the, the source of the seed of life. Ano ba ang gusto ng Panginoon sa atin? He wants us to live. Kaya nga pagdating ni Yahusha, ang laging tanong sa kanya ng mga tao, yung mga Pharisees na lumalapit sa kanya, even Nicodemus, how can we inherit eternal life? Because they knew, sabay napansin nila, throughout generations, namamatay lang. Generation after generation, we're just dying. So why are people so... Uh, So curious about living more than the life that we have today. All right? So, malaking tanong yan. And alam nyo, nakakalungkot kasi meron pong confusion na inilagay sa atin a lot of doctrines that have confused us and have put in our minds na we can have that insurance na tayo ipupunta na na ng langit. At yan yung sinishare natin dati. Pagsado ko pa yan, Romans Road. Alright? Romans 3.23, Romans 6.23. Tuloy-tuloy na yan. Alright? Hanggang sa John 1.12, magiging anak na tayo ng Panginoon. Now, if you put it into perspective and put it into uh, the perspective of the Torah, possible naman po that we can inherit eternal life. Kaya nga sinasagot ng Panginoong Yahushe. Sabi niya, believe the commandments, guard the commandments. Yun lagi, kadalasan ng sagot ng Panginoong Yahusha when it comes to eternal life question. Pero, ang tanong ngayon, ano bang pinaniniwalaan ng tao ngayon? Where is the faith based on? Kasi babalik at babalik tayo dito, isipin nyo, tayo dapat, kung tayo ay umaagot sa tubig, saan tayo umaagot? Alright? Saan tayo umaagot? Because we should be going back to the source of life. Now, anong tanong niya dito in, in Numbers chapter 14? Sabi niya, kailan? Hanggang kailan ba sila? Hanggang kailan ba lahat ng mangyayaring ito para maniwala sila sa akin? Alright? For all the signs which I have showed among them. And these signs are for examples to us also. Alright? Itong mga signs na ito, crossing of the Red Sea, The, divide, uh, the, the water from the rock, the, the battles that they won, Korak being eaten by the, the, the earth. Napakaganda pong pag-aralan nito. Bukas tomorrow, by, swallowed by the earth. And uh, there are a lot of things we can learn from the Torah that should make us understand who we should believe in, who we should have faith in. Deuteronomy chapter 27 is a book of Amen. All right, let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 27. All right, so if you start from verse 14, yan po ay sagutan, sabi dyan, and the Levite shall speak and say unto all the men of Yashrael with a loud voice, and then you've got all the curses. And at every end of the verse, you will see the word, the same word, Amen. Alright. So pag tinignan mo ngayon siya sa strong concordance, magkaiba siya ng reference. Why? Because the vowel points are different. However, the same Hebrew letters are there. So it's basically saying, if I read verse 16, Cursed be he that set it light by his father or his mother, and all the people shall say, I believe. I believe. And it's not just basically saying, I believe, I will have faith so that I will not be cursed. Pag sinabi niya kasing, I believe, ibig sabihin, gagawin ko din yan. Naniniwala ako that I will be cursed when I do these things, kaya they're saying, amen. Now remember, Hebrew is a broad language. Malalim po ang Hebrew in the sense na it can be positive or negative. So, anong tinasabi nila? Amen to signify, okay po, naniniwala po kami dyan. Ang tanong, are they believing with their mouths or with their heart? 
Kasi anong sabi ng Panginoong Yahusha? You, ano yun, you proclaim me with your mouth, but your heart is far from me. Alright? Malayo ang puso. Now, the word believe ay hindi lang humihinto sa bibig. Kundi dapat pumapasok yan sa puso. At sinasabi ng Panginoon in Numbers chapter, that's a very important verse in Numbers 14, kasi ang Panginoong Yahuwa mismo ang nagsasalita and asking, ang kailan sila maniniwala sa akin? And that's a question that we should all think. Ngayon, kanino ba talaga tayo naniniwala? Did our faith stop in Jesus Christ? Because if that's the case, then we don't believe the source of life. Alam nyo, kaninang umaga kami po yung nag-uusap-usap. And I encourage you to join us in Zoom because it's better to fellowship with one another, seeing one another. Mas madali pong mag-usap kesa nanonood po. Uh, naiintindihan ko yung mga kapatiran natin na mahina yung internet and can only view in Facebook. I understand that. But, but if you have an opportunity to join us in Zoom, please do. Kasi mas maganda na nag-uusap-usap po tayo ng ganito. Mas maganda na nakikita ko kayo kung dumidila ba kayo sa akin or <laughs> umiirap kayo. <laughs> because it's fellowship as well. But let's go back to the the word believe. Kasi yan yung pag-aaralan natin more tomorrow as we go to the study. They were saying, Amen. Amen. And sabi ng Panginoon in the New Testament, how many times do we read that? He says, verily, verily. Amen. Amen. So basically, sinasabi niya ngayon, pabalik dun sa mga tao, believe, believe. Maniwala kayo, maniwala kayo because in the Old Testament, you were the one saying you believed. Pero kung tutuusin, kaya kayo nagkaganito, kayong mga Israelita, kayong mga Hudyo, kaya kayo nagkaganito is because you really didn't believe. That's why when Yahushua came, how many times, especially in John, you will read, Verily, verily, I say unto you, you must be born again. Amen, amen. So babalik ka ngayon sa Hebrew, at pag binalikan mo, Kaya nga confusion eh. Kasi kailangan mo bumalik sa Hebrew, then babalik ka ngayon sa English para mas maintindihan natin. Nakita nyo how confusion has crept in? Pag verily, verily, anong ibig sabihin? Wala. Wala lang. Okay, he's emphasizing something. But when you go back to the Hebrew word, he's saying, amen, amen. Anong ibig sabihin, brother, and binang amen? Believe. So basically, he's saying, mas malalim, pag sinabi ko sa inyo ngayon, Maniwala kayo, maniwala kayo. You must be born again. Compared to just saying, verily, verily, I say unto you, you must be born again. What has more impact? The believe, believe, the amen, amen. And he's saying, Yahusha is saying, maniwala kayo. Saan? Doon sa tinabi sa Numbers chapter 14, sabi ng 14, sabi ng Panginoon, hanggang kailan sila? Kaya, hanggang kailan kaya nila makikita yung signs? And up to this point in time, people still do not see the real creator. They will not, they do not want to, katulad na sinabi ni Brother Ivan kanina, until a person realizes that the creator gave his commandments, mali ang sinasamba nila. And that Jesus Christ that have been put in our religions, that, that has been taught to us when we were young, is a fake Jesus Christ. Why? Because that religion taught us na pwede ka nang kumain ng baboy, taught us Christmas ang kanyang kapanganakan, and taught us a lot of pagan things which does not lead us to the Creator Himself. So, ang tanong sa atin ngayon, sino ba ang pinaniniwalaan natin? Because darating ang panahon, darating ang panahon na may mga roots pa, I don't know kung sa ating lahat, may mga roots pa tayo ng, ng, ng pinanggalingan natin that we really have to unroot. Alam niyo yun, pag naalala ko nung bata kami, tinapabunot kami ni mama ng mga talahid 
kasi nag, nag yung maliit na garden namin pina-landscape niya tapos pag may mga talahin pinapatanggal niya sa amin yun so pag kasi pag ginamit mo yung pangkat ng damo ay sasama lang sila doon so kailangan mong i-unroot minsan napuputol so pag naputol lang siya ibig sabihin nandun pa yung root alright nung mga talahid na yun and ganun tayo probably a lot of what we say oy na unlearn na natin yan ay akala natin okay na tayo but remember ako personally I've been in Babylon for for her 40 years okay for 39 years of my life so don't expect that every doctrine will come in easy all right pero yun nga if we will just have an open mind and an open heart into receiving scripture mas mauunawaan natin kung sino ang pinaniniwalaan natin because a lot of maybe a lot of people uh, will uh, sa pag-aaral natin ng numbers and then may mga maririnig kayo na bago sa pandinig ninyo na hindi angkop dun sa doktrina dati ng ating mga simbahan we just have to really learn how to listen first and to search the scriptures like the Bereans. Kasi mas mauunawaan po natin. Ang prithada siya pag binaybay talaga natin itong Torah. Okay? So what do we believe in? What do we have faith in? What do we have... Uh, saan ang ating imuna? Okay? Saan nakakabit ang ating imuna? Is it connected to Yahuwah, the source of life? Or huminto ba? Kay Jesus Christ. I understand. We've got verses in the Brit Hadashah. I know the verses. Acts chapter 4 verse 12. There is no other name uh, under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. We can talk about that. John 1.1, 1, 1, in the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him and without Him was not anything made that was made in him was light, and that light was the light of men, and that light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. I know the verses, brethren. Pero yung pinag-aaralan natin ngayon will connect those verses sa kaiba dun sa mga naituro sa atin. Kaya nga po, we encourage you to meditate on scriptures. Because tomorrow, uh, praying and hoping that I can clearly explain a lot of things which are, for me, they're not earth shattering anymore because I've learned how to follow my, uh, I, I learned how to till my ground, my follow ground. Till your ground, binubungkal. And that's easier to unlearn kasi mas matatanggal natin yung mga, mga, ugat na naiwan dun sa loob ng puso natin. Pero katulad ng sinabi ko ni Alma when we started, kasi si Alma, nung nag-umpisa po tayo, sabi ko sa inyo, hindi yan naniniwala sa akin. Pero sabi ko sa kanya, uh, mas maigi ng magturo ng ayon sa salita ng Panginoon at iwan ka ng tao kaysa alam mo ng tama pero ayaw mong ituro that's being partial to the Torah. Okay? And uh, I hope that we are all one in this. Hindi naman po tayo dapat mag-away-away. Hindi naman po tayo dapat uh, magkasamaan ng loob sa ating mga pinag-aaralan. But uh, just alalahanin po natin. Yahuwa Ekad. Alright? Yahuwa Elohainu Ekad. Yahuwa. The Lord our God is one Lord. He is only one. And there is no other Elohim beside Him. He was the one who said that in Isaiah. He is the first and the last. And there is no Savior beside Him. Alright? So, I hope na pag nag-aral po tayo bukas, mas maunawaan natin sinong pinaniniwalaan natin, sino ang pinaglalagyan natin ng ating pananampalataya, and then we get to understand whenever we say Amen, mas malalim po ang ibig sabihin nun. 
It's not just about saying amen because you want to say amen. It's more about believing and having faith. They're all words connected to each other. If you need, uh, these are the uh, Strong's Concordant reference. You can write it down just to search it out. H539, H530, H543. And then in the Greek, makikita niyo po dyan, G4100. Uh, basahin niyo na lang po. Mayroon po magbasa ng baliktad. <laughs> G three nine eight two G G four one zero two and G four zero nine nine. They're all connected words coming from the word pistachio. Di ko alam kung yan ding galing yung word na pistachio. Pero or piste. Pero napakaganda po. Napakasarap pag-alala ng mga bagay nito because it just just like what the Torah says, as the Psalm says, "Open thou mine eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of thy Torah." And uh, it doesn't, it actually builds the faith. It, it, it puts the foundations of the faith deeper. And we understand kung sino yung Panginoon ni Abraham, ni Itzaak, at ni Yaakov. Because that is the same Elohim that we should be worshiping today. Not any other Elohim na ginawa ng tao para paniwalaan natin at bigyan tayo ng false insurance na tayo ay pupunta ng langit. All right? Before you judge me as an antichrist, hear me out first and study the scriptures for us to know who the Messiah really is. All right? Because Moshe himself was the Messiah at that time. Paano ko masabi? Because he was the one who delivered them out of Egypt. All right? So, so, men, so much parallels about Yahusha HaMashiach. And I hope you you follow studying with us kasi uh, there are times na alam niyo yun maraming nagtatanong po sa akin and saying paano yan brother MB balik pa din doon sa King James issue when somebody asks me that question that simply means you haven't been following you were not following our lessons and uh, hindi po niyo po talaga maiintindihan kung hindi niyo sasaliksikin if we're still close to that mindset na perfect ang King James Mga kapatid, King James pa rin po ang gamit ko. The same Bible I used four years ago. Four years nga ba? Wala. Lang. Tingnan ko lang. Uh, May 1, 2016. See? It's been five years that I've been using this Bible and it's the same Bible I use. I just have my Edsefer as a reference here beside me. But Bible I, I use is still the Bible. I read every day. So... Huwag niyo pong sabihin sa akin na bawal kong basahin yung King James. Dahil may karapatan din po ako dito. Ito po ay <laughs> ito po ay free. Basahin ng bawat tao. Kaya <laughs> I encourage you, baka kasi dun sa mga nagtatanong sa akin, hindi nyo pa nabasa yung King James. Basahin nyo muna. Basahin nyo muna. And uh, when you have read it, that's when we can reason together. All right. Ay, ayan, encouragement ni Ma'am C. Read the 1611 version because the 1611 version, I believe, has 81 books, if I'm not mistaken. 81, the Sefer has 87 or 89 uh, books. So I'm, I'm not uh, claiming that it, it's all scripture, pero we can test scripture. All right? We can test if it is scripture and see if it goes with the 66 books that we already have. All right. So I hope na tayo po ay may natutunan ngayon. Any closing remarks before I close? Salamat sa Panginoon sa mga information na binibigay niya po sa atin sa liwanag ng kanyang scriptures, ng kanyang salita. And just want to leave this verse, mga kapatid, sa John chapter 8. This is the scenario na pwede nating sabihin na parallel doon sa panahon ni Rahab that the same, the same picture, the same situation na ang Panginoong Yahushua is he saves this woman who committing adultery and we can say that a harlot woman na ang sabi niya on verse 11 is hindi rin kita kinokondem. Woman, where, where are those then accusers? Hath no man condemned thee? Sabi niya, sabi niya sa verse 11, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. So basically, 
Yahushua Hamashiach save this woman and then sabi niya wag ka nang magpatuloy sa paglabag sa instruction sa Torah. All right? The point is nandiyan yung mga parisi na nagko-question sa Panginoon na anong karapatan mong gumawa ng mga ganito, magpatawad ng kasalanan, etc., etc. And sabi ng Panginoon, mayroon akong dalawang witness na katulad ng instruction niyo sa Torah. I is the witness of myself and my father is also the witness. So meron siyang dalawang witness. On verse 19, ang sabi diyan, sabi ng sabi ng mga Pharisee, then said they unto him, where is thy father? Yahushua Masiyak answered, you neither know me nor my father. Imagine that. He's talking to the people inside the church. <laughs> Sa loob ng simbahan. Yung mga tao na sinasahap, sinasabi na, hindi niyo ako kilala. Hindi niyo rin kilala yung tatay ko. Kasi sabi niya, kung kilala niyo ako, dapat kilala niyo yung tatay ko. So mga kapatid, kung kilala niyo si Jesus Christ, dapat kilala niyo ang Panginoon, Yahuwah. If not, then there is a big question there. Sino yung Jesus Christ na kilala ko? Right? Kasi sa bibig mismo ng Panginoong Yahushua, sabi niya, kung kilala niyo ako, dapat kilala niyo yung nagpadala sa akin. So kilala na natin ang Panginoong Yahuwah. Yahuwah Eluhayno, Ekad, Yahuwah. Maraming salamat po at makita-kita tayo bukas sa ating Sabbath service. Shabbat Shalom sa Pilipinas. In the matter of our right. Amen. Amen. So thank you brothers and sisters. And balik tayo dun sa, uh, I'll just leave you on this note. If Rakab believed in the Elohim of Yashrael and was given deliverance from Jericho, not only that, she was given the opportunity to become part of the lineage of Yahushua HaMashiach. Kung siya po ay nabigyan ng pagkakataon. I don't know. We may or we may not be part of the 12 tribes. But one thing for sure, if you believe in the Elohim, of Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov, and you choose to follow, to guard his commandments, and believe in the testimony of Yahushua HaMashiach, sabi po na scriptures, tayo po ang, tayo po ang poprotektahan from the enemy. Tayo po yung, yung po yung pangako sa mga, uh, sa mga tao ng Panginoon. Alright? So, napakaganda lang na makita that Rakab and all of the other Gentiles, Caleb, uh, Batia, sila po ay nagkaroon ng deliverance and became part of, I hope, and yun nga, pag nakabasa po kayo ng mga lineage, think about it as the book of life. I'm not saying it's the book of life, but it wants, when their names are written, kahit patay na sila, it, it, it just shows that they were recorded. Mahirap pag binlap out po yung pangalan natin na wala nang pakialam ang Panginoon sa ating mga pangalan. <laughs> All right, so I hope we learned something today and I hope we we align ourselves in believing the one who we should truly believe. Okay? So tayo po yung manalangin. Let's pray. Our Father Yahuwah, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Our Alahim, Alahim of Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov. Our Alahim, Abba, our Creator, our Master, our Redeemer, our Savior, the Holy One of Yahshua, the One who we must believe, and the One Father who purged us from our iniquity. Father, we thank you for our Torah portion, our half Torah today. Salamat Panginoon sa lahat ng natutunan namin. Salamat po sa mga kapatiran ko na nakapag-share ng kanilang mga uh, natututunan din. And I pray, dear Father, that as we continue to collaborate and discuss about your word, I pray that we continue learning and that we continue to apply ang lahat po ng aming natututunan. We thank you, Abba, for everything that you showed us today. We pray, dear Father, as we say, Amen. Talangin ko, Panginoon, na tunay, galing sa puso namin, ay tunay namin maunawaan ang mga itinuturo mo ito. And uh, we pray na patuloy mo pong tutupin ang puso ng aming mga mahal sa buhay, ang aming mga kapatiran na hindi talaga makakunawa, Panginoon, ang mga natututunan namin ngayon. I pray, dear Father, please remove them out of Babylon, just like how the angels remove Lot from Sodom and Gomorrah, I know, and please 
If you can drag them out, I pray, dear Father, na mas ipaunawa mo po sa kanila. Kayamanan ng iyong salita. Remove the blindness in their hearts. Remove the, the veil in their hearts, the blindness in their eyes. And we continue to plead, Father, ay tulungan mo po sila na maunawaan ang mga nakikita namin. Father, thank you so much for the enlightenment. Thank you so much, Father, for everything na naituturo mo sa amin. And please, please continue to teach us the hunger and thirst for your righteousness. And we pray, dear Father, na patuloy mo po kami ibuklod bagamat kami po yung magkakahiwalay. Ay salamat, Panginoon. Kahit sa teknolohiya na meron kami ay magamit namin ito upang kami po ay makapag-aral ng inyong salita. And we just pray, dear Father, please help us in our preparations today. We pray, dear Father, na ikaw na waang patuloy na manguna sa amin. At uh, we pray, dear Father, na ikaw po rin ang mag-glorify namin until we celebrate our Shabbat with you. We bless you and we glorify you. We ask for your forgiveness. Please cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And we pray all of these things in the most mighty Shem Yahuwah and uh, our mediator Yahushua Hamashiach. Amen and Amen. All right. So, maraming salamat mga kapatid. And uh, just be ready to bring your plowing instruments tomorrow. Maraming po tayong pag-aaralan about Korak. And I hope that uh, we'll learn a lot once again once we study in our Shabbat. So, Shalom, and see you on at 9 o'clock tomorrow. And if you can join us also in the SBC conference, Sabbath conference, I, you're most welcome All right, to join us. That right after the adding service. So we'll start tomorrow at 9 o'clock. So we'll have early breakfast. And then we'll proceed on to our given time slot at 12.30 in the afternoon. So, magpipresent po tayo ng ating mga natututunan sa Okta. Alright, so magandang hapon po sa inyo lahat. Magandang gabi. And uh, see you all tomorrow. Bye. Bye, Bye po. Bye po. Shalom. See you tomorrow. Si Mama Edna, narap ko na. <laughs>